Welcome to the only place where real, raw, and vulnerable conversations happen with IFBB Bikini Pros to give you an inside look at their struggles, strategies, mindset, passions, and all of life beyond the stage. This podcast is made to inspire, motivate, and remind competitors and the average gym goer that even the most extreme lifestyles and elite athletes have their ups and downs. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I'm your host, Celeste Rains Turk, and now it's time for the Confessions of a Bikini Pro podcast. Today's guest became an IFBB Pro at the 2020 Muscle Contest USA Championships after 11 regional shows and seven national shows. She started competing in 2015 and has been lifting weights since her junior year of college at Penn State in 2012. Welcome to the show, Jennifer Oresco. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm great. I'm so happy to have you on the show and glad we had a good laugh before we started recording. And of course, um, I'd love to know if there's anything you do or maybe think about or ritual you have right before your heel hits the stage. Um, every time before my heel hits the stage, I don't, I don't think that, I mean, I guess it's a ritual. I don't know. I just do the same thing. I'm always like practicing my posing in any mirror, like that I see I never bring one for myself so I always just like am borrowing somebody else's or like if there just so happens to be like a million laying around backstage I always practice my posing like a bajillion times and then I just literally like I envision in my head myself on the stage and like nailing my routine like I'll, I'll literally like I'll try to like see it happening just because like I never want to trip and uh, mm-hmm. stumble and stuff so I try not to like overthink it, but I just try to like envision myself nailing it. Yeah, no, that's great. And have you ever tripped on stage? Um, honest, like I'll, I'll like stumble like in my transitions or like go into the back pose. Like I'll I'll just like stumble over my feet a little bit but no I've never like actually like fallen but I'm scared of falling <laughs> when I'm nervous like I'm shaking and I'm like oh my god and what am I gonna faint am I gonna fall what's gonna happen oh my god those like, leg shakes so posing. I can be so confident posing in like my house or the gym but then like when I start getting like nervous it, it feels like my body like forgets how to like be and I'm like okay I just need to remember how to pose (laughs) even (laughs) after all those shows too like it never changes I'm always nervous for sure I love how you use your mind to rehearse um because Mm -hmm. there's plenty of literature that shows people who rehearse things in their mind get just as much development as those who do it in the real you know um just a little bit less development whether that's physical strength or development or whatever but same thing with mental rehearsing of anything so Mm -hmm. I think it is awesome that you do that I think it makes a big difference and I want to talk about your journey because you've come a long way since the beginning of your competition career Mm -hmm. um you've had four different coaches you've done 18 shows you had more losses than Mm -hmm. wins and even more so in the last two years you've changed so much it seems like so Mm -hmm. what's changed in your approach to prep and off season over the years um honestly I I don't even have any like any of those horrible off season like rebound situations I've never I've never been like that um I'm not gonna lie and say that I'm perfect and I've never like experienced issues with like disordered eating of course but like I've always been like so on point with with like everything like um I just remember like my first time prepping I was with this one coach she was online she was from Canada I literally loved her so much she was a nutritionist so she like gave me macros and then like once or twice a week I was allowed to like make my own meal with the macros and like I learned so much I asked her every why every ha- like I asked her every single thing that I ever thought so I learned literally so much from her that like moving forward from that like I would reverse out of shows perfectly like literally perfectly and then like I moved to New Jersey unfortunately 
<laughs> I was in Pennsylvania and then I moved to New Jersey. I hate it here. But, um, <laughs> and then I just found a coach in person. I was like, maybe it'll help me like progress and I'll, I'll see him in person. Like he'll help me with posing, like everything like that. So then I moved on to that and I, I was with him for a few years and I was just never really competitive nationally, like at all. Like I went to, I did universe in 2016 with him and I was actually pretty confident. Like I wasn't, I, I knew I wasn't going to like win or anything, but I was just like, all right, I just want to crack like top half of my class. And like back then, uh, I think there was honestly, I think there was like 35 girls in my class it was crazy oh. oh my god it was the longest day ever too we didn't go on for finals till 1 a.m like I'll oh never goodness. forget it it was the worst show ever remember when universe what it was team you and they it was one day yeah it was crazy so so for that show I didn't get in the top half I was you know 16 whatever because after 16 I stopped counting and then um I didn't leave him because of that, but there was just other issues I was having with him. And uh, I think we did a couple more shows after that together, but then I, and then I switched to another coach just because like with, with that, with my second coach, it ended like so suddenly um, that I was like, I just scrambled and I just like reached out to a friend who I knew was a coach. And like, he coached me for literally two shows. I think. And then um, I did a national show with this one, the second coach, because my training protocols had changed with him a lot. And like, I did look, I think I looked better. I don't know. I don't even remember. This was a long time ago, too. This was in 2017 then. And I did one national show with him. And I also got like last call out, second to last call outs, I think. And that hurt me because I actually felt like like way more confident than I did prior and I just like saw something in myself that I didn't see before because that year I also was winning first place in local shows and got an overall and stuff so like I just like had more confidence and like I was progressing in my journey and stuff and then I did that show still got like last call outs and I got off stage and I did the typical I'm never competing again and I'm, I'm never gonna fit in and I don't look like any of these girls and I never will blah 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 so then I found Shane and I was like, all right, let me just, let me just do this. Let me just trust this. Right. I'm just going to keep going. Cause there, cause the girls who were backstage who I admired like so much were his clients. And then like, I just knew a couple of people who had used him and I like went on his page and I was like, these girls are freaking insane. So I just like reached out to him and he's like, He's like, I did notice you on North, or it was North Americans then was the second national show. He's like, I, I remember you from that show. And I was like, oh my God, what? He remembers me? And I was like, last call out. <laughs> but um, he's great. So I've just, I've been with him and um, I guess he just like, he just like knows what the judges are looking for. And that's like the main thing with Shane is like, he knows how to get your body to where it needs to be and he knows what we're looking for and he knows what color to wear and and he helps you with your posing and you know like I get all aspects with him like he he doesn't just do like okay here's the diet and here's training and have fun like <laughs> he's very very like detailed he knows like he knows like small details that are like make or break you know yes so um so with him no, I've been with him since 2018 and I did like I, I did an accidental like year off season not really off season but like a year with him before I even stepped on stage with him just because I wanted to compete that in 2018 that year um but I was on this medication for anxiety that made me gain 20 pounds oh wow like I'm not kidding. When people tell me that medication makes them gain weight, like I, I, I've never believed them before until it happened to me. And I was like, dude, what the hell? I actually didn't even know that it was medication. I actually thought that my body was broken from competing. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, dude, I'm never going to compete again. What is wrong with me? This new coach probably thinks I'm just fat and not following a plan when I'm literally perfect all the time. <laughs> like, oh, what that's the hell? frustrating. It was so like I I was like I'd rather be skinny with anxiety 
than freaking take this medication and feel out of control of my whole body. I was doing 90 minutes of cardio and like literally hardly eating. And I was like, Jeez. what is going on? Were you it doing was that? So or was like, that was your coach's protocol because changes weren't happening. The 90 minutes was his protocol. Honestly, eating, I skipped so many meals. I tried to eat as little as humanly possible, like bad, like really fucking bad. But, um, yeah, I was just like, I, I don't know what's, what's wrong with me. Like I'm broken. Like I'm never going to be able to compete again. And like, it broke my heart because I loved it so much. Right. Like yes. it was my life. It's, it has been my life for so long. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm never going to be able to compete again. This coach, I think I'm just like a bullshitter, but, um, he stuck with me. And then like, I accidentally stopped. I didn't know it was from the medication. I literally thought I was broken. So I accidentally just like ran out of the medication and like seeing the psychiatrist was so expensive that I just was like, I'm not going back so he can refill the prescription. That's just like a bullshit way to get money out of me because it was like three or $400 to go see him. And I was like, I'm not doing it. So I just stopped the medication. Like I weaned myself off of it because I'm not dumb, but like I just weaned myself off of it. And then um, once I was completely off of it, I lost 12 pounds in like four weeks. Wow. And I was like, whoa, holy shit. And then my cousin was on the same medication and stopped it and lost 20 pounds in like two weeks. I was like, whoa, this is insane. So um, moral of the story, I'm never taking medication again and I'll just stay psycho. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to ask you, how are you managing your anxiety? Um, I take ashwagandha. I've been taking that for years. Um, and then I just like, I did, I was in therapy for a little bit, but I stopped actually because of COVID because then it was all like phone calls and it like, wasn't doing too much. It wasn't helping too much. Um, but I did learn, I've always learned like really good breathing techniques and just, it's just taking things day by day. Like, honestly, I just, feel like I don't know medication is just uh, it's just like a it's almost like a quick fix you know what I mean like I do have backup like Xanax that I can take if I'm ever like in a moment of like panic or something like that I never take it like ever but um I I just like I just take things day by day quite honestly it's it's hard like there's I feel like people are so strong who go who go through like mental illness because there's nothing worse than than like literally waking up and you're battling your mind every minute of every day like what can you not accomplish if you can do that every day right so oh, yeah. I just go day by day and I just if I have to breathe through things or just vent talk to somebody like nap honestly I nap a lot um but yeah, there's, I, I don't think that there's an exact way that I do it. I just <laughs> do it, you know? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you that I think people with mental illness who do wake up and feel like they're fighting themselves every day or they're like, they don't even understand their own mind or it's hard to control their own mm -hmm. mind, whether that's a chemical imbalance or something else, it's, it's incredibly challenging and therefore also fortifying if you're willing to mm -hmm. face it and I, I think it's unfortunate there's a lot of stigma around yeah. people with mental health issues but you know it's also scary to face those things and like you said especially for something like anxiety I always get upset because mm -hmm. I study um, clinical mental health counseling that's what I'm getting my master's mm -hmm. in and something I've in psychology before that and something I've always found interesting is that people still only take medication, not medication and therapy or not mm -hmm. medication, therapy and personal development. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. and, and health and fitness, you know, it's like, okay, yep. the medication yep. is not proven to be as effective on its own as it is with these other modalities as well. And specifically, right. you know, there's some mental illness you really do need medication for, and that's okay. Oh yeah. For, oh my God, know? for sure. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> but for something like anxiety, like if you're taking medication, it's working for you. Great. And also then if you're like yourself are implementing these other things, that's awesome. And I, I think it's really mm -hmm. cool how you recognize like, okay, I am not going to take this anymore. I'm going to take myself off it slowly. And then I'm going to focus on these other mm -hmm. things. And 
taking it day by day is a lesson we can all benefit from. Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's so vague, but, um, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. Like it's hard if you're not, if you don't feel it, you know what I mean? Like I take it day by day. Like some days I do feel like shit and some days I accept that or, I just, I have to stay busy is, is my main thing is staying busy. Cause if I'm just sitting thinking, I'll lose my mind. Like I go crazy. So not actually crazy, but like, I just, I like, I, I call it like, I have like dying anxiety. Like I think I'm dying all the time for absolutely no reason. Like I work at, um, massage envy now. And one of the massage therapists was just like, um, doing my temples the other day and she was like do you feel like more tender over on this side I'm like what does that mean do I have cancer like am I dying like are you telling me I'm dying like I literally always just think I'm dying for no reason but staying busy is what mainly keeps me keeps me like on track and like a lot better mentally than if I'm not doing anything so like I wake up. This is my day. I like wake up. I go to the gym for like three hours just because I do my cardio and then like I'll shower there and eat or whatever and like chill and then I'll lift and then I'll come home, get ready, go to work and then I'm at work till 10 p.m. And that's that's like almost every day. And then on my days off, I literally go to work to get a massage. Like (laughs) I'll go get a massage or I'll go get my nails done. I'll I'll go do something for self-care, which is a very like a thing that people need. First of all, (laughs) massage for like recovery, but also for like your mentality. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I I love how you just broke down your, your normal days. Is that true in prep and improvement season? Yeah. Uh, I always like alter my workouts around my work schedule, but like, as of late, I just tell them like, I would rather have uh, like when I wake up and have all my energy, like all my energy I expend in the morning and then like work for me is super easy. I don't, I don't, it's not like strenuous, you know, like it's not like taxing or hard. So I'd rather just like do all my workouts in the morning and like just really, really focus, kill it. Like, with all the energy that I have in that moment. And then at night, I just sit there, you know, like I'm like, it's like, it's kind of like a secretary job almost. Um, I'm like answering phones and like booking appointments, checking people in and out, selling memberships. And it's, it's like, I'm not, it's not strenuous. So I'd rather work at night. So I'm like, basically just like the closer always. Yeah, no, totally. I love working out in the mornings because then I'm not like before I'd work out in the afternoons or midday and I was like, Oh, it's like a nice break, you know, from like my morning. Oh, that's what, yeah, that's what I do. I do. I'm not an early, early person at all by any means. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Like it's my morning, but it's because, because of my work schedule, I get home at like 10 30, 11 ish. And then I'm like, you know, laying in bed till like one, two, and then I wake up and it's like nine. So I, by the time I lift, it is like midday, but it's nice because the gym is so dead. Yes. Yeah, that's true. That's what I, I have to go when it's not busy. And I like, I like going early in the morning. And then when I'm in prep, I do what you do, like cardio, uh-huh. eat, relax a little in the parking lot or wherever in the gym and then yeah. <laughs> hit the weights because then, you know, it's done. And like you said, then you can just focus on yeah. your work, um, whether it's taxing or not mm-hmm. for that day. So um, speaking of self-care and mental mm-hmm. health, there are challenges that you faced during your journey and some of them made you think you would never compete again. So can you tell us mm-hmm. about some of those things that you had to face and overcome to ultimately see that you could do this? Um, I just, okay. So the reason, well, anxiety like makes you think a million and oh my God, I'm like, oh, see, see, this is me. This is my brain. <laughs> Like, I just didn't say anything for about a minute straight, but I said, <laughs> I said a million words. Um, like with it, it's, it's not that I just have anxiety. Like, yeah, I have anxiety. I have panic disorder and generalized anxiety disorder. And I know, but I haven't been diagnosed with ADHD. 
um, with prep, I don't know if you like develop it or like just because um, mental illnesses like coexist. I believe that I have OCD as well. Like a lot of different things, they just all coexist, and there's like pieces of each that I have, right? So um, I just was like over, like overthinking, like because I gained all that weight from the medication, I'm like. Did I ruin my, but I didn't know it was from the medication the whole time. So I was like, did I ruin my body? Why am I, I've never had to do this much cardio and like eat this little and I I'm gaining weight. And then I'm like, what the hell is wrong with me? So like, also I lost my period for three and a half years. And that was giving me crazy anxiety too. Cause I'm like, I'm gaining all this weight. And I'm not getting my period back. Like, what is wrong with me? And I'm like losing my mind. So this happens like once a year where I have like a really, really traumatic panic attack where um, twice I hyperventilated and had to go to the hospital. But I've also called ambulances on like two other occasions. Like it gets really bad. Like no joke. Like when people like say oh my god that gives me anxiety I'm like it doesn't like you know it's it's not like that it's like a very real thing that I I have like gone to the hospital for actually I went to the hospital on my birthday one year I think that was 2019 um but so yeah it's just it's um don't even know where I'm really going with this here it's it's really hard to over so like yeah I lost my period and it's just I'm like been in my wheels I'm like I don't know what's wrong with me like I probably broke my body from competing so much and like staying so lean for so long because like I said like I was so strict and like obsessive over like even my reverse like I reversed up to like the one month point out where my want my first coach di- directed me to and then it's like I didn't pay her for like an off season so she just like gave me a guideline for like a three month reverse, but I would, I stopped at the, at the one month because I wanted to stay lean. Mm-hmm. So like I stayed just so lean for a very long time. And I was like, I really think that I, br- I broke myself because now I'm fat and <laughs> I can't lose the weight. And I don't understand like, and it's just so unlike me to be any sort of like Un, I was like I was uncomfortable like I don't I don't even want to throw numbers out there because I don't think that anyone should compare themselves to numbers wise but like I was like 20 to 25 pounds more than what made me feel comfortable and it was like so it was just so scary because when you're like out of control of your body when you have been in control of it for such a long time you're like I'm like, uh, it was like making me depressed. And I've never been actually depressed. I just have really bad anxiety, but I've never felt like depressed. Like I was embarrassed to go to the gym. I was embarrassed to like leave my house because I was just so uncomfortable in my own body. And like weight isn't everything, but like none of my clothes fit, like nothing. I was like, oh my God, what the hell do I do now? What do I have to buy a whole new wardrobe? What am I just doing? But like, so like over time, I got like a little bit more used to it, but it still was just so uncomfortable and like just so disheartening because competing and like fitness, it, it was such a big part of me. And I'm like, and I understand that like competing though doesn't define me, but it is a huge part of me. And I, I won't even deny that. Like it's part of my identity and that's fine with me. Mm-hmm. Um, so just feeling like I lost that. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Like I have to just accept a new life now. <laughs> like, you know, I'm just like going crazy in my head. But um, I was just so glad when I started seeing progress and like I dropped all that weight so fast. Um after I stopped taking the medication and it was just like mind blowing. I was like, Oh my God, I've never felt like this good. And it was so crazy. Like I only lost like 12 pounds at first initially. And like, that's half of where I feel comfortable. Right. But I like looked better than ever because I, I didn't like, I didn't skip the gym. Like I still went, like I still went and I still gave it my freaking all every single day. Like lifting so like I was trying to lift heavy I I didn't have a great training regimen back then uh, as good as I do now but 
I was just still trying to train and like I I still was like going to the gym and everything so once like my muscles that I I did build muscle (laughs) thank god not just fat but um once that started to unveil I was like wow maybe okay maybe like I needed that like that was a blessing in disguise because like I never would have gained all that muscle like I never never would have because I loved staying lean and like skinny and like small (laughs) but um like so thank god that happened to me because then it was my 2019 season and that season is like what changed me like what changed my mindset entirely so it was it was a blessing obviously like in disguise and it's always just a part of your journey like it's just part of it like things are going to happen and you it's it's not like a make or break situation it's just like you just it's an obstacle to get over it's always something to like deal with and like learn from and Mm -hmm. grow as a person so yeah, so there, um, I just have this thing in my in my mind where like I don't let anything stop me. That's why I never stop going to the gym. I'm like something's got to give, and like maybe something's wrong with me, but uh, I don't know. I'm just gonna keep going and hope for the best. And I don't know. I'm I'm glad that I, I'm I'm glad that it happened because I'm glad of where I am now. And I never would have been here without that step. That's a beautiful place to be mentally where you can look back on a challenging time in your life and say, wow, like, even though I went through that and it was really hard, it actually put me in a better Mm -hmm. spot. And I found it interesting that you said, you know, you gained muscle as well, because I Mm -hmm. know you were like doing a lot of cardio, your food was really Mm -hmm. low. So what happened after you came off the medication and suddenly your body just started dropping? Like, did you go into more of a building phase? Were you prepping? No, then I was like prepping. It was crazy. Like I was like trying to prep all of 2018, but I had to like, I, I planned for two shows in like the end of the year. And I, I had to be like, I'm not, I can't do it because my body's not responding to absolutely anything. And I'm not stepping on stage again, feeling like, like I don't belong. I, I like, I want to feel like, like my best and I'm not getting on stage until I feel my best. Because earlier that year is when I started the medication and I tried to do one show. I tried to do Pittsburgh. That was in 2019. That was, I mean, 18. That was the only show that I did. And I never, ever in my whole career of bodybuilding, I've never gotten second call outs. And I placed ninth and I got second call outs at this local show. It's, I think it's bigger than local. I don't know. It's the Pittsburgh where the pros are and everything. Yeah. It was like, it was like, oh my God, I never felt like that. I was like, why is my body acting like this? Because I started the medication like two months prior and I had no idea. And I was like, oh my God. So I was like, I never want to feel like that on stage again. Like I, I was so out of, out of my, my element. Like I was just so crazy. I was just like, oh my God. So I did call off two more shows that I had planned after starting with Shane. And then in 2019, I was like, all right, you know what? <laughs> you know, new year, new me. I'm going mm-hmm. to go balls to the wall now. So um, I was like, whatever, I have to try. So I went and did the Pittsburgh again. And um, that was like my redemption show. And all the girls who play top five of that show are always like, they always turn pro. Like it, that show is, it's insane. It's the next closest thing to a national show, I believe. Yeah, it really is like the competition's crazy. So that was my first show back from like all that hardship, gaining all that weight. So then um, I went and I wanted to obviously place top two to get nationally qualified again. And then I placed third. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm always the runner up, never the winner. <laughs> so I don't know. So yeah, like after I came off the medication, I just like started losing the weight and I was I was like, all right, here we go. This is it. <laughs> like it's my time. We're coming for it. So then yeah, then I placed third. And um I was like so super proud of myself. And I just couldn't believe that I was in first call outs again after like all that time, like 
of being fat. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. really fat, but you know, it was crazy. It was it was a really good feeling. I and think- then and then I just like went nuts. I was like, all right, I'm doing national shows and doing all this stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna really try because like I did the two other national shows beforehand with mm-hmm. other coaches, but. I never actually like tried, tried, like I never like believed in myself that I could turn pro. You know what I mean? Like I I just did it and I was like, I want to see what I can do here. But this year I was like, no, like I see this, I see something in myself that I've never seen before. That's why like, I'm so glad that I went through all that because once I did end up building all the muscle and stuff and like the fat started falling off, I was like, wow. I have like really crazy potential that I can finally see that I've never seen before. Yeah. Would you say that's when you knew you really wanted to become a pro or did you know before that you wanted to as well? Yeah. No, I honestly didn't know I wanted to because it felt for me like so out of reach. Like it just felt like a myth almost. And then like, not like a myth, but like literally just like it's, completely out of my reach I remember my one coach the second coach that I had um he was like I could turn you pro in a year I'm like dude shut up no you couldn't like literally shut up (laughs) I'm like you hear yourself and then like a lot of people would always like I I don't know I I used to work at GNC so like I had a lot of like people with bodybuilders or like ex-competitors come in and and I just remember this one guy, he's like, you're never going to turn pro. You need like a million drugs for that. I was like, um, okay. I just like have always gotten comments like that too. Like, oh, well, you have to take all these drugs and like, you have to like, you know, fuck the judges and all this shit. And Dude, I'm like, I well, I'm not doing that. any of that. So like, leave me alone. Like, yeah. So it, I, yeah. So like, I just felt like it was just out of my reach and like, just not possible at all. And I was like, it's just not, I was like, I'm not on that level. I'll never get there. I don't really care. Like if it happens, it happens. Cool. That, that'd be so cool. But I love competing anyway. And I'm just going to do it from like for fun myself and stuff. But then, you know, it gets so goddamn expensive. And I'm like, why am I doing this for fun? Let me just actually try here. <laughs> so, so in 2019, when I finally like saw in myself, like something that I never saw, I was like, all right, I'm going <laughs> doing yes. it. Wow. So you had that confidence boost after doing a Pittsburgh show and yeah, from 2019 after to- Pittsburgh. Yeah. I placed, yeah, I placed third at Pittsburgh. So I was one spot away. Yes. And then Shane, Shane was like, we saw my stage pictures. My hair was so light. It, it was huh. weird. Like I didn't even realize it was that light, but he was like, you need to dye your hair black. And I was like, really? Yeah, all right. Did you want yeah. to so dye I dyed your hair? my hair black? What did you want to dye your hair? Um, no, actually, like, I didn't care because it used to be black, but then it just like faded like crazy. And then I would like get highlights and it was cute and it was like, whatever. But, um, I didn't really, I, I honestly didn't care. I was going to like get a wig because I was like, uh, oh, black sounds really permanent, but I just, I didn't, I was like, I'm going to do it because I'm going to keep competing and I'm, I'm just doing it. So I did it. And then I competed the week after Pittsburgh at this show that actually was new and it was like literally down the street from my house it was so crazy and I was like all right I'm doing that show (laughs) so I dyed my hair black and did that show and I felt so like legit I I felt like I've never felt before and like when I would like take videos of myself I'm like are you fucking kidding me you look like a pro like I was so mind blown I was like this is crazy I've never looked like this I've never felt this good and then I won, I got first place of that show. Yeah. I just, I didn't get the overall and I was like, that's silly, but okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But like, honestly, like overall, like racking up all those trophies, it's not necessary. It matters how you do in the national shows. So I was like, all right, I'm feeling myself and I'm excited, but I also was scared because I've never done well at a national show. So I like, didn't know what to expect. Right. And then when you did hit the national circuit, you went, you got 10th at the first one, then you got third, mm-hmm. then you got fourth, and then you got yeah. third, and then you third, got it. And then you got third <laughs> again, and then you got third again. I'm like, oh my God, all right. 
Yeah. So how did you, how did you cultivate that mindset where you were like, I'm no longer going to get third. I'm either going to get second or I'm going to get first. And I'm going to, I'm going to get my pro card. Like what, what had to shift mentally? Honestly, like nothing. My mind after, after USA's, when I got third, my mind was just like, you're going pro. You're going pro. You're going pro. Like I just kept telling myself that over and over, like you're right there. And honestly, the top three, top four, top five, God, it's interchangeable, you know, like, like anyone could be in any of those spots. Like, we're all at such like, a level where it's any, any single one in the top five at any of the national shows could be a pro, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's like, you just got to keep showing up, you just got to keep showing up. And that's what I did, even though like, it's expensive, but I was like, all right, I just got to do it because I'm not going to give up on this goal because of money. Yeah. And you know what? I want to talk about that because I don't think enough people really consider that it is an investment. Um, You got to be willing to make the fine. If you're going to commit to this, (laughs) you better freaking be ready to commit. So how did you make it work financially? What were some of your, what were some of the things you focused on to have the money to do it? Um. I'm very, very, very lucky and blessed and grateful for my dad. He helps me a lot. Mm. Um, I know I'm old. So I'm like 29, but <laughs> I do like, like he just understands like how important this is to me. So he does help me a lot, like with the airfare and stuff. Like sometimes I'll have miles or like for the Orlando show last year, he had a timeshare so we didn't have to pay anything, but it was a little bit farther from the venue, but he just, he always helps me out with some, like with one of the big chunks of the finances, like the hotel or the flight or something like that. So he helps me there. But then um, I make, I make pretty decent money. Like I don't have, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed because I'm like older, but I, I don't have to pay rent because I live with my mom. <laughs> so, I wish so, like, I still I, live with I'm my able parents to save sometimes. Up. Wait, say again. I sometimes wish I still live with my parents because it's such... Aww. I it's know. a beautiful it's like, time it's hard for me it's hard for me to talk myself out of living here when like I'm young and like I'm able to compete right now and if they don't mind that I like like you know I live with my mom like if she doesn't mind and it's it's a huge savings for right now it's just it's just a part of my life that I'm doing right now because I can okay so no one's so, judging like, you and if they are then pay. screw <laughs> <laughs> My mom's like, you can live here forever. And, you know, like, she loves Aww. me. She doesn't care. <laughs> um, so I, I am able to save up and I make money enough for myself. So it, I make it work. I make it work. Yeah. Good for you. And <laughs> I think too, for, from like another perspective, in case people were wondering, like, if you don't have the support financially from others or things in your life, save Every time you get your paycheck yeah. or you make money from your business, put it in a separate folder. Oh, you know what I, I mean? I do. I have, I, <laughs> I do. I have a savings folder. And there I, you so go. Every time, every time I get a paycheck, I'll put like one or $200. If I'm struggling a little bit, like I won't that week, you know, but like I have racked up a good amount. And then like with COVID, God bless, um, all my unemployment went towards those two national shows last year, like every penny. And I didn't care, which is kind of silly, but I'm fine. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, we did get that, that other stimulus this year. Right. And, uh, Mm -hmm. I put that right in a savings account. I haven't touched it. So like, it's all about saving and being smart and managing time and money. Yeah, absolutely. I always tell myself the only thing I really invest in is um my business, my clients, yep. and my bikini. You know, that's it. Like exactly. literally exactly. anything competing in those things. It's like the rest is just yeah, like that's me. chill at home, <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> yep. Yep. I don't go out. I don't spend I, I literally I hardly shop at all, like ever. The only thing I ever buy are like new leggings. <laughs> Like, yeah, seriously, so. whatever's going to help. Actually, it's funny. My accountant, he was like, I've never seen this before. I'm like, what? He's like bikini prep. I'm like, don't ask questions. 
because <laughs> I'll like write it off as like part of my business and I like he's really uh, good and um he's like yeah I've never uh never seen this on someone's taxes before I'm oh. like oh well thanks for uh taking care of it anyway <laughs> but no I think mind your business don't yeah. ask me for pictures okay I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's he's great, but I think you know people forget about the financial <laughs> part. <partner. laughs> Can be like um, willy nilly with this sometimes, and it's important to yeah. consider like long term what what's necessary. So I appreciate yeah. that you're willing to touch on that subject because it is something to consider, and I think it's a great investment in yourself because it's proof that you believe in yourself and you have these mm -hmm. successful runs at national shows or you knew you were going to get your pro card and I love this because so many girls have had them on the show they always say your time will come if you stay consistent and I hear this all the time mm -hmm. but I don't always hear that in the journey that they believed their time would come but now I'm hearing it from you so mm -hmm. what do you think changed between the shows that eventually made it your time maybe physique wise presentation wise or or just show wise um, honestly, for the show in Orlando last year, uh, which one was that? Nationals, right? It's usually yes. in Miami. Um, for that show, honestly, honest to God, I don't even think my pack, my package, I don't even like saying that. My presentation of physique, I don't think at USA's won me my pro card at all. Like, wow. my can was disgusting. Like, it was just so bad. Like, um, my presentation wasn't amazing. Um, my mentality, honestly, at this point wasn't amazing because I did get the third place in Orlando the week before or three weeks before. But I think that Orlando, um, my presentation there, my I changed my suit to, to the bright green one. And I, I was so happy. Like, I mean to tell you, like, I never felt like that on stage that is where I feel like I won my pro card but I think that the two girls before me of course they deserved it but I think that they were competing all year they were in the judges eyes so they're like all right so the way that I explain it to other people as well um when they like miss it by a little bit or um I'm preparing them to be like okay even if it's not this show I call it the alley-oop so it was like my layup like it was just like the show that like I I was brought to their attention and then the next time I showed up they're like that's yeah that's the girl and she's winning this time so like I just think Orlando was just like that was it and I was like my alley-oop and I got back in their eyes after not stepping on stage since Miami Nationals the year prior because then COVID happened and there were a couple shows and I actually, I wasn't even planning to compete in 2020 at hmm. all. I was going to take the entire year off because I was in a relationship in which I agreed to take the whole year off, which was stupid because I don't think that you should ever in life put a single thing above yourself and your goals and your passion and what's in your heart. Um, but I did that because I was making a sacrifice and he was doing it out of um, I want to say care because I was getting mentally eh with food so he was doing it out of care out of a good place but um there's just it's it's not like you have to pick on working on one or the other which is what a therapist literally told me to my face he was like, you don't have to do one or the other. You can do both. You can work on yourself mentally and also compete because you love to do it. Wow, that's so, rare. That's I, I rarely hear people say that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. And I'm so glad someone told you that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. I started seeing a therapist and um, that he set that my ex-boyfriend set me up with. And um, it, it honestly did help me a lot. Like it helped me a lot. And um, he really related to me because he, because the therapist, like he dealt with some things that I had dealt with in his past as well. So he could like understand like why I say certain things, like why my mind thinks things like a certain way. Um, so he's like, I don't think that you have to separate them. I do think that you can do both at once. 
no, when you're like in a super deficit and starving, like, of course, sometimes it's going to be hard to control like a binge or something like that. Of course it's going to be, but you can work on it. Like you don't have to set your, your expectations so high of yourself to be like, um, I have to be perfect and I have to turn pro. Like you don't have to be like that. Like you can work on both of those things. And as long as you're making progress, it's working. It's you're okay. Like no one's perfect, literally no one. And sometimes I get so like caught in my head or like nervous or like, I'm like, Oh my God, I don't eat enough. And like, am I going to faint? Am I going to pass out? I'm going to die. Am I dying? Blah, blah, blah. And then like, you just gotta like, I don't know, like everybody is, is, has like a fucked up thing about them and whether they ever tell anyone or not, they do. So I talk myself out of anxiety a lot by like, just reminding myself that I'm not perfect. No one's perfect and no one has to be perfect. And it's, it's just, you know, I don't know. I just try to keep it real. So then, yeah, I didn't plan on competing and then I did. And imagine if I didn't, I wouldn't have turned pro. Yeah. So when you had made that promise not to compete for a year how did you go about saying never mind oh we broke up (laughs) that was a big that was a big never mind (laughs) man we broke up yeah we broke up and I was like you know what I'm fucking going for it and I like went all in um and I was like I never looked like that I never felt like that I was so confident and I was like just like breaking out of like something that was so restricting like the relationship I mean it was just like I was just like in any relationship you know like I mean I don't know people people when they're in the relationship when they're in a relationship they'll be like no like I can be myself like no you can't fully be yourself (laughs) I'm gonna get so much shit for this no all right I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say too much but anyway I felt restricted and I felt like I couldn't fully be myself and when I finally was able to it's like I just like went balls to the wall and I I just I was like wow this is so freeing and amazing and I can do what I want and I can thrive and so I did and then I and then I turned pro and it felt really good even that much better that's amazing and I appreciate that you're so open and honest by the way I think that's awesome about you I get I get a little insecure I don't want to say I don't ever want to offend anyone (laughs) (laughs) my intentions are never to offend anyone (laughs) yeah no I just have been through like I've just been through like a lot of stuff so so maybe my mindset's a little skewed but that's just me yeah yeah and you know someone who disagrees or does agree or whatever has a different mindset too so yeah I think it's good that you're yourself and you're who you are and you're sharing your experiences because then it empowers Mm -hmm. others to do the same whether or not they agree with Mm -hmm. you it's like whatever that's the beauty of where we are it's like oh we can say what we want exactly every lifestyle is so different like yeah I always, um, I also get anxiety about, um, like where I am in life. Like I said, like you could hear me how insecure I was about Mm -hmm. saying I still live with my mom. Like, I just think that every life is like, takes a different path. So like a lot of, even like my family members, my dad says it to me all the time, which I I understand, but like I've had like aunts and uncles and stuff. They're like, you need a real job and like, you need to stop competing, like stuff like my dad never tells me to stop competing, but um, they'll be like, you need a, a when are you going to get a real job? Like they always say like, when are you going to get a real job? I'm like, why is a real job a nine to five and I have to sit in a fucking office? Like that's not, it doesn't mean it's a real job. When are you, what if I yeah. look at you and be like, when are you going to, when are you going to be happy? Why don't, why don't you take a life path that makes you happy? Like if I'm doing things that are working for me, why does anyone care? Like, no, I'm not married. No, I'm not pregnant. No, like, you know, like people at my age, like this is normally they're engaged. They're pregnant. They have kids. Like 
I'm like, all right, I don't, but that's okay because I'm happy and I love my life and I love what I'm doing. And I'm following like something, a passion of mine that like, it literally like makes me happy to wake up in the morning. And I don't know many people who feel that way, even with all that stuff, even with a husband, even with a house, even with a kid, like I, I don't know many people who feel happy to wake up in the morning and like do their daily. You know, I am, I truly am. So that's basically how I live my life. Yeah. And like, okay. So throughout our life, it's been proposed that there's different stages of development. And while mm-hmm. I think that lifespan development and those, pro- those stages that have been proposed and are displayed through many people, it's not the end all be all. And I think it can sometimes be dangerous as it makes people think this is where I quote should be rather than Mm -hmm. this is where I'm happy being and actually improving because of if you went and you got Mm -hmm. whatever other people consider a real job or whatever you would not grow as much as the version of you who's doing what's best for them and making those choices and and following their heart and learning along the way at least I don't believe Mm -hmm. so because what you're going to be trapped you're going to and obviously miserable. some people don't. yes and some people don't have yeah, the choice it miserable it would feel like <laughs> prison it's yeah. like jen in a relationship it's prison I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> um no if honestly, you guys don't know it's, jen's it's not, not looking it's, it's not <laughs> it's not worth doing something it's never ever worth doing something that you're not that you don't want to be doing that you're not happy doing unless you foresee it like like say you're working for a company but you know that you're gonna move up and and get the role that you want like okay I understand but for sure it's just not it's just not worth going on that fake timeline that's what I call it a timeline that you're talking about like yep the the stages of life I call it the timeline Mm -hmm. or crawling up the ladder of life of this timeline like where you're supposed to be married by 28 um, you know, pregnant and with a kid on the way by 29, 30, like whatever, like have a real job in quotes. Like I, I just, it's, it's not worth following a fake ass timeline. Like what is, like, what's the purpose? If you're not happy doing something, why are you doing it? I, I'll never understand. That's why I don't understand why like some people these days like bikini and like competing in general is like oversaturated because people just do it because they see it on insta you know what i mean? yeah <laughs> like why are you doing it it's so hard <laughs> and it's not worth it like financially nothing if you don't love it i don't i'll never understand that was a yeah. completely different tangent that i just thought about I love the tangent because it made my mind think like, oh, you know, what's crazy. And I feel like we're just like, I love this conversation because it's just totally <laughs> off the cuff, like whatever. But I'm thinking too, this whole theory of like having a timeline is so, it's not concrete in, in terms of how we're developing as a society and the fact that there's so many cultures within our society. Like there are cultures yeah. that, you know, they believe you should be having babies before you're out of college. And then there's, and mom and dad will take care of those babies and that's good. And you're all set. And then there's people in that culture. They don't want to do that. Does it make them wrong? Maybe to some people in the culture, just like how in maybe a more European type of family, Uh American type family, they might say, no, this is how it needs to be. You better, you know, be moved out and have it. It's like, well, who, who taught you that? When did this become, especially because People like our parents, you know, it was strange if they had kids after 34. It's like, well, we waited too long. Right. But they're right. fine. They were fine. You know, like you have to look, be willing to us. push that boundary. Look yeah, here. look at us. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know. I think it's so crazy because you know, I was just talking to my mom about this too, like with how I, it's a little bit of a tangent off of even that. But like, you know how like when I was 12, I literally was fucking hideous okay and like a tw- I just found a 14 year old on Instagram who looks 22 or something in the yeah. gym in shorts like posing her booty in the mirror 14 like I shit you not so, oh I like, know I believe I see anyway. it it's crazy <laughs> so I just think like the culture is changing so yes. shouldn't the timeline be changing and then yes. like 
my mom actually studied psychology as well. So like we're bouncing off each other and that's she's amazing. like, yeah, well, like millennials have this, like, that's me. <laughs> she's <laughs> like, millennials have this like instant gratification mindset and it's just different now. And I was like explaining how, how like technology is and is like enhanced and advanced like crazy. So like, it's not uncommon for people to be more of like the mindset that I have because it, it's it's just not like it was back then when she was growing up or like even when when people like in their 40s right now are growing up like where they're on that timeline you know what I mean it's right. just like it's so different because of everything that's evolving and happening yes. and like maybe it's also because of how young like or old their parents were when they were birthed I don't know mm-hmm. like every everything is so like like individualized I don't even know I don't know my now my brain's spinning but anyway I'm not I'm not here for it and I'm never gonna follow somebody's timeline of what they want me to be doing in life and then also my one aunt told me and my brother my brother's 31 now she was like you know people like you are the problem with uh, with like what's wrong with America because you guys don't want offspring like what like kids and I'm like, what the hell? What? Why does that make you wrong? Uh-huh. Though? It doesn't at all. <laughs> Why do you think she thinks just, is wrong? Exactly. I just feel like, I don't know. So I just feel like some older people like just have yeah. this expectation for like how it's supposed to be because that's what they were taught. But like, get with the times, lady. Okay. <laughs> well, at <laughs> the same time, me and you not have our expectations. Kids. Not everyone wants what? just like she has her expectations so do we yeah I want to be happy that's my expectation (laughs) I want to do what I want to do right now and having kids right now wouldn't allow for me to do it so which actually honestly I'm not gonna lie I want to just shout out to everybody who does have children and competes because I could never never I would absolutely strangle any anything that's crying just saying (laughs) <laughs> no I just get like super irritable I get super irritable even with like annoying customers or clients or like members at work or whatever and I it's, I'm just like I, I can't imagine like going home to a child right now I can't I can't can't imagine it <laughs> you know like that's super admirable I just think that that is a whole different level of strength that they have yeah absolutely it is I have so much respect for those parents, any parent really. And I remember there was this one comedian. Who was it? I don't even know. Oh, you know what? It was Conan actually. I don't really watch his stuff to be honest, but he was doing his like farewell thing. And there was this clip where he's like, I've seen all your kids. They suck, but mine are amazing. And I was like, that's so (laughs) funny because I think, you know, a lot of people like they don't want kids and then they they maybe have kids or something changes in their life. And they're like, oh, my kids are great. But I, but I, all the all these parents out there who are competing is like wow that is amazing you make it work and I think of um yeah. I think of a few come to mind who just do what they have to do to get it done mm-hmm. and it's like it doesn't mean you have to want it or they don't have to want to enjoy it but whatever mm-hmm. people decide it's like as long as it's adding to your life and like you said don't compete if you don't like it you know why are you doing right. this yeah same thing Back. I stand by that <laughs> heavy <laughs> um speaking of instant gratification bodybuilding mm-hmm. I think is a great way to delay instant gratification for you your journey hasn't been so quick um maybe like right. some people's has so what do you think is the benefit to the experiences you have had and it not being so fast oh my god I love this topic so much because <laughs> I think that um with like newer competitors now so like I've been doing this since 2014 like that was my first that's when I first started prep for 2015 Mm -hmm. I think now when people start like in the now in the now days there's a lot more like I don't even want to say like evidence there's it's more advanced there's like technology right so like Mm -hmm you you go to the right coach immediately like off the bat so like it's it's not easier to go pro by any means but you know what needs to be done now because like 
it's so much more there's so much more like science-based stuff or like oh my god I can't even think of what I'm trying to say like there, there's just more there's better techniques there's better methods yes. there's a better way to do things now that we know right but yes. like back then we had no fucking clue what we were doing we were like I'm gonna go on stage and eat <laughs> broccoli and chicken for like five weeks like whatever so it was just like such a learning process and for me like I wouldn't change like I would rather have had my journey than somebody who did two shows and went pro not to knock them at all by any means but I'm so thick-headed and like strong and I know how to lose and like I I had a whole journey of this shit like I've been through a lot I've been through a lot of different techniques and like I've learned so much. Like I learned so much. Um, and I've, I've been through a lot too. Like think about all the things that you go through, like in seven years of your life, like plus prep, like it's crazy. So like, I've just learned a lot and I I've experienced so many positive and negative things that like it, it's really helped me grow as a, not only a competitor, but a human being in life. Like now if somebody like I don't I don't know I've just grown so much that like things don't phase me as much because I know I can get through it like if somebody threw at me like like I don't know something kind of like upsetting or traumatic and I'm like all right well we're going to deal with this like head on we're then this is how we're going to do it maybe we don't have a plan right away but like we're going to get through it. we're going to figure it out like I just have that mindset and I just feel like people who just like start competing and they win right off the bat like okay welcome to the pro league where you're not going to win right off the bat and how are you going to handle a loss then they quit you know what I mean like I'm never going to quit I'm, I'm here for like the long haul I'm not quitting because it's not who I am and I've just developed this insane piece of brain function that just is like it's okay if you lose and you know what the next time you're just going to do better or and if if you don't place better you're gonna look better at least you're gonna do you're just gonna give it your all like every day and for every show uh, it just helped me be a I just think a lot more resilient consistent persistent competitor and human in general yes yes indeed I could not agree more like thinking back to because I did my first show in 2015 as well and thinking back to who I was as a competitor then versus now it's like I like it's completely different because of the experiences mm -hmm. I've had in and out of competing and like I'm personally at this point now where I can say to my coach like I don't need a show I don't need a timeline I just need to be better mm -hmm. and whatever exactly. that means is what it means <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Like I said, in 2020, I didn't plan to compete. And then I was just like, I was like, I think I was like six weeks out. And I was like, I think we can whip myself into shape in that amount of time. And he's like, sure. <laughs> he was yeah. already getting DMs. Like, when is she competing? When is she going to be like, you know, like, wow, coaches, like other competitors, like, yeah, like worried. And I was like, I'm not even planning on competing, but okay. Um, so yeah, no, I agree with you. I I think just like where we are now, it's and like the industry has evolved so much that yes, I don't know. I'm glad that I saw it evolve like that. It like grew like I grew such a passion and a love for it. Like I just feel like when people just start competing and like go pro immediately or like they just always win it's not building a character it's not building character it's not building like and like I'm but I'm not trying to take away from them like they're probably an amazing person anyway and like they're already super strong like doing any sort of prep is not easy like right, <laughs> never easy you're like, not minimizing their success something freaking amazing and I think it's so impressive when you can do it in that short amount of time but for me, I'm glad that I like was have been in the industry for a very long time. It's 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 helped me so much grow, like understand different techniques, understand um different like judging calls. Like, you know, like I've been studying this shit and I've been looking up to these girls for years, like years. It's not new to me. So I love it. I'm I'm so glad that I was able to compete in the MPC for as long as I was, first of all, because 
also I did my pro debut I remember like a couple of weeks ago I remember and I was like <laughs> I was like I kind of missed the national shows because I could like hang backstage uh, with my teammates and like it was like fun and then at the pro show I was like help me I'm new so I was like what the hell <laughs> but no I, I I like really really loved all my years in the NPC and I'm so grateful for every single opportunity that I had within the NPC I have heard this now many times like don't rush it through the NPC enjoy your time in the NPC mm-hmm. it changes in the IFBB like I just interviewed another woman Kiki and she said the same thing like she was yeah. really grateful for her time in the NPC developed her. And I think there's the common theme there of like when you're in it and you're chasing it or you're going after it, mm-hmm. it's really exciting and riveting. Now tell us a bit about your pro debut. Like, is there anything you wish mm-hmm. you had known before, like going into it? So maybe it, it would have <laughs> felt different. I wish I knew absolutely anything before. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was like brain dead because I was like, I just like if you don't know what to expect and I I don't expect anything out of it right besides like what I always want to do when I go into a show is be confident and like and do everything in my power to perform my best to be my best and I was just like I just felt like so overwhelmed there was just there's girls there that like you've been looking up to for years like it's so crazy it's just like this it's just like so scary like I was just so scared and so nervous and I was the first person to perform (laughs) which was great because otherwise I would have overthought it anyway but backstage like even though it's a pro show it's it I mean it was also an NPC show but like it's like rush 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 you know they're like all right 38 stand here stand over there stand here like the, the, you're rushing like around the whole time so then I was going up and I was like shit well I feel rushed and I don't know how long I'm allowed to be up here so I cut my routine like in half and because of wow. that I was like all fucked up with my steps and stuff and I'm like oh my god I don't know what I'm doing up here <laughs> oh my god. so I was like it was kind of a mess but it's fine because it was such a good learning experience. I'm like, you know what? Next time I'm going to take my time, own that shit. I belong here. I'm doing it. So like, I'm glad that I, that I did that show. It was great. TSG, the, the shop gym, um, Skyler and everything. Was, the event was gorgeous. Like the stage was freaking beautiful. The pictures, Jeff Binns was amazing. Oh, yeah. They were amazing. They so came out like, beautifully. I'm so glad I did that show. And I honestly like felt like absolute dog shit on stage because of like my performance. Like I just felt like an idiot and I hated every move that I made. And I was like, so not confident. But then those pictures came out. I was like, damn, I didn't even look bad. <laughs> like, I really didn't look bad. I just felt so like confused and lost. And I, <laughs> I got off stage and I checked the chain. I was like, I, did, I don't fucking know what I'm doing here. I did horrible. <laughs> I I fucked every possible thing I could fuck up um but honestly like I watched a video I didn't I didn't look as horrible as it felt but it it wasn't good so (laughs) I'll just know better for the next time it was such a good learning experience and I'm glad that I did it yes yes absolutely so what's your plan next Next, I'm going to do um, an even scarier show, the Janet Leigh Battle of the Boss. Oh, <laughs> I'm wow. Idiot. I'm such an idiot. Why? There's so many Olympians. I'm like, all right, whatever. It's cool. It's fine because it's just, it's really cool that I even get to stand on stage next to them. Yeah. And see how you do. And I don't, is, is your goal one, goal one day to be on the Olympia stage? Oh my God. Of course. It's everybody's goal, but <laughs> I'm going to, I like to. I like to stay realistic. Like, you know, my first two national shows was like, I'm just going to go see how I, how I do. Like, I got to, I got to keep it realistic. I'm not going to be like, go to the Olympia, my first rookie season. Like, that's rare, you know, like, like rare diamonds do that. I think Daraja did that and Lexus. Um, then like, a, you know, like a couple, uh, mm-hmm. Emily, that girl who won the, her pro Thank show you. right after her, or yeah. yeah. Um, There's just like random girls who'll do really amazing right off the jump but like that's never been me right like I I, it took me a really long time to get good at like nationals and it's gonna take me you know like I'm gonna work my ass off like always but 
I don't expect to just be one of those right off the jump amazing people. Um, but I do give it my all every day and I always want to be just better than before. So yeah, of course, like eventually I'll, I'll want to be at the Olympia. I want to get there. Everyone wants to get there. It'll be amazing, but I just want to work my way up. Yeah. Yes. And you will, because you have that long-term mentality. Yep. Longevity. (laughs) So when when you decided, okay, I'm going to compete at the pro level, obviously, right, right after, I shouldn't say maybe right after, but shortly after, what did you do in between USA's and then your pro debut? Uh, um, what was this? What, what year are we in? Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't even remember. What did I do? Um, I guess I just like, I actually like, I did, I stayed leaner, I believe. Um, I can't, I literally can't even remember what happened. It was 2020. Now it was December to like June, like six months. Yeah. Um, honestly, I just, I stayed lean because I always do, except for the one time with the medication, but like, I don't, I just think it's not about like changing something this is something me and Shane even talked about um like I was good enough to go pro right so what like why change something like there's nothing needed to be changed I just need to be consistent and be a hard-ass worker which I am and um the most amazing thing about my last relationship was like he's so so good at with training he's a coach himself but um he's so good with training that he taught me how to how to train like way more efficiently and like way harder so I've just been since him I've just always implemented like a way better like training technique and it it showed like through and through so like I just am super consistent with my training and like training heavy and drop sets you know like failure sets so, um, yeah, I just really want to uh, eventually, like, just make an impact on the pro stage and the, and the pro level. Um, hopefully, like, I just want to be seen, you know, like, I want, mm-hmm. I, I, I don't, I don't want to be one of those pros who just turn pro and disappear. And I don't think that that's, that's like me at all. I don't think that'll ever be like me. So right. I just want to do everything that I can. Like, I just want to train with intensity and I want to be intentional with every every part of my seasons so like yeah I do stay on a little bit like on the leaner side but I still I did gain like 12 to 13 14 ish pounds after USA's I got I got really small so Mm -hmm. I did gain a good amount of weight and now I'm back down I'm smaller now obviously because I just did the show and I'm going to do another one but um I, I, I never want to like be in like a super, super off season phase where I don't feel very like confident and comfortable because it, it affects my performance, my performance a lot. So I'd rather stay at a place like, like maybe 15 pounds above my stage weight or, or what I want to be my stage weight. You know what I mean? So like, even if I get down like a little bit too low this show, maybe I'll, I'll just like gain a little bit more I don't know it's really not all about weight right it's about how you look so right as long as I'm being intentional and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing like gaining and like in a gaining phase I'll I'll be gaining muscle gaining weight and then obviously for preps just cut down I'm just I'm just as consistent as as can be there's there's no need to change anything really that's great and you mentioned earlier there were little details that you thought made a big difference. Can you share maybe a couple of them with us? Like what are some of those things that you and your coach really honed in on to make sure you were bringing your best? Oh yeah. Um, Oh, such like, it's honestly so minuscule, like how high your suit fits up, like uh, sits up on your hips, Mm -hmm. Um, hair color, um, suit color, hairstyle. um, Like, I know a couple of people like around here on this area. I don't 
God, I, I don't want to like put anyone on a blast, but like their suit color is just ridiculous. Like lime green. No. And I even told her coach, <laughs> this one girl, I even told her coach, I was like, dude, she can't wear that in nationals. Like, okay, it was cool for a local show, but not in nationals. But um, just like little things that you learned throughout the year, like or throughout your time. So like for obviously for suit color I mean at this point everybody should know <laughs> like right they should know yeah, if like, you're studying it yeah um like blues purples like deep like bold colors are always gonna be like a good go-to green for me was kind of like out of left field kind of scary for me to jump out of blue I've always been in blue but um it was it's such a gorgeous color and I've actually I've seen some pros wear it uh, Calista Mm -hmm. I always always when I was like messaging the girl I rent suits from I'm like I want Calista's green like I literally call it that so um she wore that suit and then she had dark hair like me it it matters like suit color hair color like that shit like goes together you know like you can't just be like um I know that like Alexandria and Calista have actually done this their dark hair with the black suit I personally could never I could never do that I just I have to have like a really really bright color like my turquoise is my favorite and the green was amazing um like I said how high your suit suit sits on your hips um your color of your tan matters obviously (laughs) like yes obviously but then like maintaining it and um like backstage so it's it's like I use sometimes I'll use liquid sun rays but then protan is backstage but then I'm like well shit because they're honestly they're like a little bit off color what is um like liquid sun rays I feel like it's like a like almost like a different like color oh yeah protan. they're different bases for you sure. know what I mean One's so more like, like so I get green. liquid sun rays I have to yeah. be really fucking careful <laughs> you can't make some even get sick backstage <laughs> so um for the next show I'm just gonna because like usually Tiffany Shane's co- uh wife is backstage with us and like helping us fix our tans and stuff like with a little thing that she has yeah. but if I don't have that at my pro show I'm just gonna have to use the host tan it's gonna be pro tan anyways so whatever I, love I did pro that tan. at my pro day yeah. I, yeah I don't mind it. I used them for years but then I started using liquid sun rays because I really really enjoyed the color of it it was like a darker like it was like gr- more brown I feel so I really loved it, but um, you know, I I I can't risk not getting touched up backstage because I'm so clumsy. It's like not even funny. The girls at my pro debut, like I've known them forever, the Olympia tan girls, because I did Gary events my whole life. Yeah. So <laughs> I kept like sweating my armpits. I kept peeing on myself, and she's like, "You literally are always a pro." <laughs> I'm like, I can't help myself. <laughs> if there's a tan on me, I'm ruining it somehow um but uh there's uh, there's other like really small details with like posing obviously that matter like you obviously want to like have a nice shape from the front and then like the transitions like you never want to be on stage uh you never want a picture like to be taken of you that is embarrassing right I think Sean Mm -hmm. Carla just said that as well uh so you want to make sure like every single thing that you're doing on stage is like picture perfect because you don't want the judges to see you in a place where you're embarrassed why would you want that so just like little things with like transitionings and like how slow or fast you move or um you know like your jewelry you don't want to be too obnoxious but you don't want to like wear nothing obviously there's every every little detail hair Um, for my pro debut even for like all my shows I've never ever worn extensions but like after seeing the pictures from my pro debut I'm like wow like these girls every single detail on them is pristine at a hundred and million twenty percent so I'm like wow so I ordered hair extensions um, to match like everything to match my hair Yeah. yeah yeah okay. yeah how did yeah. you do that uh stage ready okay yeah I've heard, of, heard them. of that yeah so did you oh, what'd you do so like how, how'd you make it match um well my hair's black so that was really easy 
um <laughs> but uh I got clip-ins so okay. like I'll only need them I'll only need them for the stage and I was like I hope they're easy to put in because I'm I don't know how to do jack shit I don't know how to do makeup I don't know how to do hair I don't know how to do anything she's like yeah they're really easy you can just you just clip them in and then like whoever I use for makeup I usually just ask them to, like help me out with my hair a little bit like fluff it up or like I'll just ask them to help me if I need help with my clip-ins but um makeup is another thing like you don't want it to look like a clown obviously and you don't want it to look too light because then it looks like you're not wearing makeup like, it's just crazy how every single little detail matters like how you walk how like just your overall like flow of your presentation um the way that you like transition to the back you don't <laughs> this is the first thing that Shane was like so so picky about that I was like what the heck so like I would transition to the back but then I would like transition to the front in the same direction so it was like I was doing like a full circle if you can imagine mm -hmm. instead you're supposed to like like say I go to my right to turn to the back but then I I'm supposed to come back the same way so I don't go in a full circle does that make sense yeah I don't see I guess I'll maybe be controversial. I don't see what's wrong with doing that, though. I, I don't know. But that's the first thing he said when he saw me pose in person. He's like, you can't do a full circle. That maybe it didn't look good on you. Or <laughs> Maybe I'm just fucking hideous. And I <laughs> do everything horrible. No, I'm kidding. I don't know. I don't know why he said that. But um, yeah, there's just uh, there's so many little details, obviously, that that can affect your placing by like one, two, three places. It's, it's insane. Yeah, no, for sure. And paying attention to those details does make a difference. Like I'll do posing with my coach and then she'll be like, okay, this is good now, but then we might need to change it obviously when you get closer. And I keep telling myself, I'm like, okay, if I can walk with my glutes high and not have so much jiggle in the off season, I'll be fine on stage. And like that yes. keeps me motivated, you know? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you're right. It all matters. Every piece matters. And uh, because it's so mm -hmm. competitive now, other girls are paying attention to those details and everything we've talked about has been fantastic. I mean, I love personally just this conversation altogether and you've given a lot of great insight. I always love ending by asking for your best advice for people. So if there's other advice you want to share, if you could share for girls who have never competed before, but want to, that would be mm -hmm. great. And then for those who are mm -hmm. on their road to pro. Yeah. Um, I think my biggest piece of advice is just to trust your coach and have fun um because what's the point of doing and like I said what is the point of doing anything that's not making you happy if this does not make you happy or give you some sort of like internal drive like there's you're wasting your time but have fun with it and just trust your coach and just try to take it day by day um Keep yourself busy you know like I said a lot of things of how I deal with anxiety are how I deal with prep so you just take it day by day and even though sometimes it does suck really bad just know that first of all you chose to do this and second of all there's a there's a something at the end eventually um with a like a reward there's a reward whether it's a trophy or whether it's a lesson and you're going to get there and you just have to keep going, keep being persistent and resilient and learn how to lose. And that's it. Have fun. Yeah. Oh, I love that advice. That is amazing for any competitor. Again, just everything we talked about has been awesome. And I want to make sure people can connect with you the way we've connected and also just to share mm -hmm. what they valued and how they connected and resonated. So can you let everybody know how they can find you? Uh, find me. Uh, I am only, only ever usually on Instagram. So it's Jenny girl with three N's and two L's. Awesome. Okay. I'll put that in the show notes page. So you guys listening, that's always <laughs> on celestial.fit slash podcast. Um, if you're listening first thing, it's going to be at the top of that page. If you're listening in the future, just scroll down to the category section 
and click on her name. That's where all the show notes are, you guys. Like I'm talking timestamps, full summary notes, like all the links, everything, resources, whatever. It's all there. I think it's awesome because you could go back to parts of the episode that really resonate with you or that you want to hear again. So make sure you check those out. I have really amazing girls working hard to make those beautiful. So I hope you guys enjoy them. And Jennifer, thank you again so much for coming on and just everything you shared and making this so enjoyable. Of course. Thank you for having me. It was fun. Absolutely. And to everybody listening, I hope you have an amazing rest of your day, night, or morning, wherever you are in the world while you're listening to this episode.